All right, so let's uh, continue. I know uh, the online students couldn't ask any questions. So now's your chance. If there was something you wanted to discuss, uh, please feel free. You can unmute and ask. We can talk about it and then move ahead. We're talking about earnestly praying and persisting um, to see the answers to our prayer. Okay, which are some prayers where um, we need to pray repeatedly or you know uh, where we need to persist any categories that you can think of maybe out of your own experience uh, some prayers where we have to trust god wait in prayer hmm? okay to receive gifts of the holy spirit but you know actually uh, for gifts of the holy spirit as long as we have faith we can start moving in it receiving can happen quickly actually okay only thing with the gifts of the holy spirit we can receive the gifts but there's something known as developing or maturing the gifts that takes time okay but um yeah for that you don't have to wait so long you if you build your faith you can receive fast okay sure any anything else where we uh, have to wait a little longer to see God's answers. Uh, okay, Lucy says revival, and uh, you've also mentioned the uh, calamities. Uh, I didn't get that. Any other matters where we've prayed and waited upon the Lord? <laughs> okay, uh, the question is, when we pray, why is evil attacking so much? That's their job. So, whether, whether, you, whether we pray or whether we don't pray, there will be attacks. Okay, so don't worry too much about the attacks. Don't worry. Because it's a given. Uh, we are, as a believer, we are living in uh, it's like war zone spiritually we are all in war zone okay and therefore attacks will come and go don't think too much about it don't waste too much time on attacks if it comes just deal with it and overcome it and keep moving on sure I can feel the questions bubbling, but it's not coming to the surface. So I, I am having to wait persistently to listen to your questions. OK, here coming to uh, the comments on the chat. Lucy says, uh, okay, she's mentioned the, a particular state that is going through issues right now. Jennifer, breakthrough. Ha, OK, breakthrough, correct. So some breakthroughs that we are looking for maybe uh, professionally um, in the ministry or personal life, certain breakthroughs. Yes, it may take time. How about things like healing? Sometimes we pray for long time, right? That God, we want to see the manifestation of healing in this person's body. Or how about um, somebody who has gone away from God? We are praying for them to accept Christ uh, come back to the Lord and uh, we may feel that it's taking a while. So these are all matters where we must be persistence, persistent. Um, look at uh, James chapter 5. We will read uh, verse 16 to verse 20 and then I will move on. 
Uh, can somebody read this passage, please? James chapter 5, verse 16 till verse 20. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective for fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Mm. El Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that he would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. And he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. Brethren, if anyone among your one wanders from the truth, when someone turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from the error of his way will save a soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. Mm. Okay, so uh, look at some prayer points or requests in this passage. Earlier in verse 16, it says, confess your trespasses to one another, pray for one another that you may be healed. Okay, so healing. It's talking about healing. Then move on. Let's move on. And we see verse 19. It says, anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone turns him back. So these are two situations where prayer for the sick or prayer for somebody who's wandered away from God, uh, generally there's a need to be persistent like that widow. Right? who went back to the uh, ruler again and again and said, no, I want justice, I want justice, I want to see this happen. So in matters, particularly healing, particularly when we are praying for someone to come back to the Lord, we need some consistency. Okay, So we have to press in. Now, um, coming back to um, one example from the life of Daniel, uh, we find that Daniel, he had, you know, um, we talked about how he had a lifestyle of prayer. And we also see that he was moving in um, a lot of revelation. So God would speak to him. God would show him things. Sometimes those matters, he won't get understanding for it. But we'll find that Daniel is usually praying. He's praying more. He's fasting more. As he's praying, as he's fasting, God gives him more and more understanding uh, about even the prophetic words that he's receiving. So it's a very encouraging life. A man who prayed so much and prayed consistently. So there's a particular matter, uh, and this is regarding the exile. Um, uh, or this is regarding the Israelites coming out of Babylon. Okay. So through the prophet Jeremiah, there was a prophet, prophecy that after 70 years, okay, 70 years of being in Babylon, the children of Israel will come out of Babylon. It was already spoken by Jeremiah. You find even Ezra mentioning it. Uh, in, and the passages are given here in our notes. Um, so we could say that there is a prophetic word that something is going to happen. Remember earlier, Elijah Elijah also had a prophetic word that is going to rain. But what did Elijah do about it? He still prayed. Even though prophetic word is there that something is going to happen, he knew one principle. That principle is we have to pray. Even if there is a prophetic word, so... You know, we are familiar. Somebody says a prophetic word. God is going to use you like this. God is going to do mighty things in your life. What to do with that prophetic word? We have to pray. Elijah prayed with the prophetic word. Now, what did Daniel do regarding the prophetic word about Israel? We find that Daniel prayed. Okay. Um, so Daniel chapter 9. You can read the entire passage, verse 1 to verse 24. Over there, he talks about how uh, the, the people were in captivity, they were suffering. But according to the promise of God, he, uh, he is asking God to make it a reality that they can leave Babylon. Because God's word says 70 years, not more than 70 years. So this is a lesson for us. 
even when god tells us his will okay uh that's not the end when we come to know the will of god regarding any matter what should we do about it we must pray okay we know god is going to do this maybe a personal uh, prophecy uh, or uh, maybe a prophecy for the state or the nation we must pray god did not just tell us uh, so that we'll only know we must use it in prayer that is the example of uh, elijah that is the example of daniel okay um, so consistency in prayer or persistence in prayer uh, it must be used this way all right uh, so i'll move on to the next topic here which is regarding intercession unless uh, there are uh, any clarifications from your side anything about persistence delays you have something to ask okay post it yeah uh, yes jennifer you you have a question uh yes ma'am so i uh, i have been praying for my like uh, uh, one particular person for a long time for his salvation okay but it is not happening but i'm not sure why my mm. other prayers are being answered if i pray but for this particular person how many times i pray try it's not happening i try to share him the word mm. everything but he is like he is completely opposing it mm -hmm. okay so uh, just as i discussed now jennifer when we talk about you know someone coming back to the lord or someone accepting christ uh, these are matters where we must persevere you know these things don't uh, happen for whatever reason uh, we we see that it takes some amount of time so i can only tell you to be patient i can only tell you to um, you know pray and uh, see what revelation god gives sometimes god can give some wisdom wisdom such as um, you know maybe that person uh, needs to go for uh, some in or i mean you can send them somewhere to uh, be counseled or uh, some something else can be done to help them but that wisdom only god can uh, give you so just be patient jennifer does does that answer your question uh, yes ma'am yeah okay sure uh, thank you thank you for that any anything else yes yeah hmm hmm yeah Hmm. 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 Yeah. Sure. Correct. So, see, there are two aspects. One is concern. Okay. The other is control. So, we must function in the uh, in that zone of concern. So, in the zone of concern, we will pray. Uh, we will spend time. We will show them Christ's love. Um, all that. So, the seed of God's word. All that's there. we cannot change them because see god has given all of us free will and we have talked about it he never overrides human free will now now that person coming to uh, christ it also depends on their response but what happens to some of us we move from that concern to somewhere control you have to you have to you have to do this you say this in us prayer but what are we doing we are actually forcing them even god doesn't do that god does not control he doesn't control any of us he's given us full yeah full freedom that's how it should be so 
I, I understand. I think the tension comes there because we are doing our part, but from their side, uh, apart from God working in their lives, their response also is very important. So through our prayers, we can influence. We can't control. Yeah. So we have to be very patient. There's no other way when it comes to this. Yeah. Good. Yes. Which one? Huh? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another. Okay. Uh, so you see that there are some matters where to find healing healing of the heart, healing of the body, we have to set the relationship right with people. Uh, that's where confess your sins comes in. Okay, or maybe uh, in some situations, uh, let's say I have made a mistake. Okay, now I may need to confess it to a godly person who can be trusted in order for the healing to come. So, it's not applicable, uh, I would say, all the time. Like every sin, to confess it to another human being is not, not uh, mandated. Because ultimately, who is our mediator? Who is our mediator? Jesus Christ. He is our mediator. So in the situation where I may have made a mistake, I need to confess to God. Confess your sins to God. And He will uh, forgive. He will heal. But in some situations, we have to confess to one another or we, have, we may need to confess to um, you know, an elder or a more mature person in Christ. That's when what happens, there's a release in our heart. There's a peace that comes in. Okay? So, but you need wisdom because uh, when we talk about confession, right? If you take this as a standard rule, you go and start telling everybody about your sins or you start telling everybody about the mistakes you made, it's, it can actually be quite, a, uh, you know, like we don't know how people will react, right? Some people will treat it wisely, but some people will not treat it wisely. So you don't have to confess to everyone. You need to be quite wise about it. Yeah, so we can be spirit-led about it. If you feel that, yeah, this thing I have to confess, then you should do it. Yes. Um, one question. Uh, a person persists persistence in prayer. Hmm. Okay. Uh, and so always the demonic opposition is happening. Huh. So how he is overcome the situation? And he was a very obedient person in the prayer with God. Hmm. Uh, can you come again? You, you okay. said Paul? The person is huh. persistency in prayer. Okay. And uh, he with the uh, obedience with the God. Hmm. And always the demonic opposition which is happening. And he is not answering that, uh, getting the answer from the God. Hmm. So how to overcome that situation? Okay, how to overcome that situation? So we have to engage in spiritual warfare. So we've talked about different kinds of prayer, right? So there is one category uh, where we have we can pray to God uh, and God will send his angels, he'll do whatever required to break that interference of uh, demons. But at the same time, uh, in spiritual warfare, there are many things. You can use the name of Jesus, you can use the blood of Jesus, the power of the blood of Jesus. You can declare about the uh, blood of Jesus, you can bind, you can lose. So in spiritual warfare, there are many things that uh, we, we will talk about these things later. Uh, we have to start engaging in that. So when we perceive that there is demonic opposition, we have to switch. Fasting, If prayer, the person following all, the, all the patterns, huh? if the person following all those uh, prayer patterns, yeah. then... Yeah, if the person is following all those things, then I think you just have to be patient. See, patience is something that you can't, uh, 
you know you just have to wait there's there's no other way fine i think we've uh, addressed this issue of persistence in prayer quite elaborately now we can uh, move on to intercessory prayer intercessory prayer what is it intercession we discussed last time what is intercessory prayer what is a simple answer i'm not able to hear you very well praying for others or praying for others yes praying for others okay praying for others um was that a different answer same praying for others is intercession it's as simple as that uh now when we talk about the best intercessor for us uh who is it who is the answers are coming but with very little confidence not too sure okay jesus christ jesus christ is the answer correct answer uh, that jesus is our best intercessor now when we um, consider intercession we only think that you know we pray we speak to god we um, speak to god regarding a matter or we speak to god regarding a person but in the life of jesus he did an act of intercession so it was more than speaking the intercession it was um it was demonstrating or performing or doing a work of intercession how did he do intercession we look at it so isaiah chapter 53 and verse 12 it's there in our notes uh would somebody like to read it isaiah 53 verse 12 the last part there e he bore the sin of many hmm. and made intercession for the transgressors okay so it says he bore uh, so when we read the text uh, in the bible to get its original meaning you have to go back to the language in which it was written okay so um, a, a lot of the new testament is in greek uh, this portion is in hebrew so we have to look at the hebrew words there he bore the sin of many in english it is he bore the sin of many but going back to the hebrew text what is that word which is used there that word is nasa nasa and what does it mean nasa means to lift or to carry away the burden so imagine if you are carrying a, a big table okay and you're coming from upstairs to downstairs and it's quite heavy on you somebody comes and they help you they lift it off um from you they carry it away that burden it's like nasa somebody has lifted it off so what did jesus do for us the heavy burdens that we carried he lifted it off of us so he bore the sin of many what did he carry away our sin he carried now let's let's look at that some more and uh he made intercession it says uh, did that mean that you know jesus was uh, talking something to god uh, when he was going to the cross or what does it mean intercession because we understand intercession as praying to god for somebody but what intercession is this talking about so that word intercession we have to look it up in the hebrew in the hebrew it is the word meet or oh, sorry paga which means to meet that simply gives us the picture that jesus carried away our sins and he met with god he met with god for the transgressors he met with god um paga also means you know laid on him so the sins were laid on him uh, the sins of the transgressors were laid on him so we understand that what jesus did was two things he met with god on behalf of the sinners and he carried the burden of the sinner which is sin away he lifted it off 
of the sinner. This is the form of intercession that Jesus did for us. So isn't it something like how we do? When we pray, what are we actually doing? We are carrying somebody else's burden. Yes or no? Someone else has a problem. Someone else has a concern. Someone else has an issue. But I am praying for them. In other words, just like Jesus. Jesus carried NASA. He lifted off. He carried the burden. I am carrying somebody else's burden. Just like Jesus. Because Jesus also did that. Okay? Obviously, we cannot carry other people's sins because he is the savior of the world. But in intercession, we have the opportunity to carry in prayer. That's something we can do to bless other people. Pray for them. Okay? Carry other people's burdens. Now, what else did Jesus do? We said that he went to God on behalf of the transgressors. Transgressor is nothing but sinner. People who um, don't keep the law. If you break the law, it's called transgression. So those who don't keep the law, transgressors or sinners, Jesus went to the Father on behalf of the sinners. What do we do in intercession? Same thing. We go to God on behalf of maybe, you know, my family member or my church person or my friend. I'm going to God on behalf of someone. Same, similar to what Jesus did. But what Jesus did was a one-time sacrifice act of intercession. In action, he performed intercession. Um, and what else did Jesus do on the cross? We understand that, uh, see, for the world, Jesus dying on the cross was foolishness. Paul talks about it. He says, look, for uh, people don't understand that, you know, the cross is the wisdom of God. But in God's mind, Jesus dying on the cross was the best idea. Why? One is the sins of the world are carried. Second is Satan was defeated forever because Jesus went on the cross. Now, if Jesus was not to do that for us, today we must only live defeated lives. You got it? But because Jesus went on the cross, we now have victory. So it was God's best act of intercession. So Satan was defeated by Jesus' act of going on the cross. Today, when you and I pray for someone, what happens? What is released in their lives? God's victory, God's blessings. Satan is already defeated, right? The destruction of Satan, we are speaking it again. And we are speaking about the victory of God. So three things. Three things that Jesus did. Very similar to what we do in intercession. But obviously, it's only Jesus, the son of God, who could do the act of intercession. But we can now pray in intercession. So what are the three things? One is to carry others' burdens. Second is to go to God on behalf of others. And the third one is to release the victory of God um, into people's lives and declare the defeat of Satan. So what is Jesus doing right now? What is his role right now? We, we know he went on the cross. He died. He was buried. He rose from the dead. Where is Jesus now? He's praying for us, correct? Where is he? In heaven. Correct. That's what the Bible says. He is in heaven at the right hand of the Father. And what is his role? Yes, he's an intercessor. He is our high priest. He's our high priest. Uh, so one of the roles of the high priest also, when we study about high priest, we'll understand what did the high priest do? Even high priest went into the tabernacle went into uh, the presence of God to uh, meet with God on behalf of the people. And when the high priest will come out, the high priest will be, uh, you know, he, he will speak to the people on behalf of God. So that was the role of the high priest. So Jesus, the Bible tells us, Jesus is our high priest forever. The earlier high priests, 
they used to they were all human beings so they all died right one by one they do their role and they die but we have a high priest who is compassionate and who is there for us forever and that is the lord jesus christ he is our high priest for ever and what is the work that he does in heaven he intercedes he intercedes for us now uh, when we say that jesus is interceding for us then why should we intercede why double he's doing already so maybe we can we can take a rest no what do you think jesus is our intercessor jesus is our high priest should we stop praying because he's praying should we stop praying or should we not stop praying okay when in doubt just look up a scripture that gives clarity go to john 16 verse 26 can one of us read it john 16 and verse 26 who would like to read john 16 and verse 26 in the day you will ask in my name and i not say to you that i shall pray the father for you mm. for the father himself loves you because you have loved me and believe that came forth from god okay so can you just repeat that first line in the day you will ask in my name mm. and i do not say to you that i shall pray the father for you ha huh. so it's quite clear right in that day you will ask the father so we have a task or a role in prayer we are supposed to pray that's why jesus taught us so many things about prayer he himself prayed and he is also saying i'm not saying that i will ask the father for you so just because jesus is an intercessor we should not think that our praying is replaced by the praying of jesus we still have to pray because that is a role which we have to fulfill his part he is doing but you know whenever we talk about jesus as the intercessor please understand it's not like uh, you know every time jesus is um, <coughs> some people use this example the bible also says that jesus is our advocate 1 john chapter 2 and verse 1 uh, where we understand who an advocate is who who is an advocate or a lawyer okay somebody who's pleading our case or who's fighting on our behalf so the picture we get is that jesus is in heaven and uh, he's fighting our case every time because the bible says he's our advocate okay it's it's as if like each time jesus has to stand up and you know fight on my behalf and fight on somebody else's behalf and there are so many people imagine everyone's behalf jesus has to stand up and fight the cases but it's actually not like that the way it works is through the cross through the work of the cross jesus has already justified all of us okay he's already fought on our behalf he's already defeated the devil so as an advocate and as an intercessor we have to depend on his work on the cross so every time jesus does not have to stand up and justify are you understanding what i'm trying to say so we are depending on the work of the cross that is where we put our trust and say that jesus is my advocate Jesus is my intercessor that work that Jesus has done on the cross has already spoken so much that he does not have to get up each time to fight on our behalf okay so this is how we understand Jesus as an intercessor Jesus as an advocate and the bible says that he makes intercession um for us 
and he saves to the uttermost. Hebrews 7 verse 25. Can someone look at that verse? Hebrews 7 and verse 25. By faith, they pass through the Red Sea as by dry land. Is whereas... it Hebrews 7? Yeah, 725. Therefore, he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him, since ever lives to make intercession for them. Okay, so he is able to save to the uttermost. So that just tells us how powerful the work of Jesus on the cross really is. That, uh, that work, it's a saving work, which can save people who may be even very, very far away from God. But he saves to the uttermost. Uttermost means like, to the ends, um, uttermost ends of the world. We use terms like that. So it just goes to say that the intercessory work of Jesus on the cross, it's so powerful that it can save, in other words, the worst sinner if they respond to God, if they believe in God. Okay, even they can be saved. And uh, this is what Jesus has done for us. He's already done a powerful work of intercession. And uh, him being our high priest, uh, he is representing you know, uh, who, who we have become in Christ Jesus. So every time you think of Jesus as a high priest, uh, you can be reassured of your own identity in Christ Jesus, who we have become, how God has forgiven us and how he has changed our lives. So that's uh, a little bit about Jesus and his work of intercession. We find that there are um, several other intercessors in the Bible. Jesus, of course, is our best intercessor. But then you have uh, people like Abraham. Remember, we said Sodom and Gomorrah, he went, he was trying to talk to God on behalf of the people. That is what intercession is. Right? So Abraham was an intercessor. Uh, Moses was an intercessor. Remember, he was talking to God uh, on behalf of his people. That God, please forgive them. Uh, please, you know, help us. So G Moses, as a leader, acted as an intercessor for the people. So you see that everywhere there is a need for intercessors. Uh, and that's why God has allowed that. For us to be intercessors. Even in the case of Job, you recall, I said we read some verses. They are already there in our notes here, but we won't read it again. But in his difficult situation, Job was looking for an intercessor, somebody to pray for him. So today, uh, if God puts someone in our hearts, we must intercede for them, pray for them. Okay? Uh, and uh, that way, God's power will be released in that person's life. Even Job, in a tough situation, all he asked for was, I wish there was somebody who can intercede. There is a word um, there in verse 33. He asks for a mediator, Job 9.33. He says, is there any mediator who can go to God on behalf of me? Mediator? Is any person who can plead with God on behalf of a person. So same thing applies today. You know that we can pray for others and we can um, uh, really uphold others in their time of difficulty. So God is looking for intercessors. Uh, what I'll do is, I think I'll just stop here for now. We'll uh, come back and we will, you know, look at a lot more uh, regarding the subject of intercession. But I just want us to go back and review review um, the work of Jesus on the cross as an intercessory work. We'll try to spend more time on that, try to understand that, uh, and then we will come back and discuss a little more regarding
praying for others. Is that okay? Sure. All right. So um, we will wrap up now. But are there any questions before we stop? Questions or comments? Sure. So uh, looks like there are no questions. So we can uh, stop. Or would anyone like to pray? Where's the mic? We'll close with prayer. Oh, you have a question. Which one? Uh, first Timothy two five. Yes. Uh, it's ma clearly mentioned that Jesus only the one intercessor between us and the uh, God. Mm. Okay, but here uh, another Abraham and Moses, another two intercessors mentioned here. So that's what my question. Why? Mm -hmm. See, uh, one mediator between God and man means that uh, we can go to God. You have to understand that Abraham was before the cross, right? Abraham was before the cross. So after the cross, what the scripture means is that we can go directly to God because of what Jesus has done. He is the one mediator between God and man. Now, um, you know, in some beliefs, they, they think that uh, you need maybe an elder or a leader or even sometimes people refer to saints. Like you pray to them, they will go to God on your behalf and they will make your prayer heard. But the Bible very clearly says there's only one mediator between God and man. Who's that? Jesus Christ. So we actually don't need to go to any, any other person for our prayer to be heard. Got it? Uh, now, Abraham as a mediator, how, any difference there that you're asking me about or what is it? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Correct. Hmm. So you have to understand the context. Both are correct. Okay. So, uh, when we talk about Jesus as the mediator, what we are saying is we don't need any other human being to make a sacrifice for us or do the work which Jesus did. Because only one work is valid or approved and that is the work of Jesus. But when you talk about Abraham and Moses, we are talking about leadership. Okay, so leaders are supposed to pray for their people. So the context is different, uh, Vicky. That's the only difference. You got it, what I'm trying to say. Not sure. OK. Hmm. That's true, yeah. Yeah, so one mediator between God and man to take away the sin of mankind. It's only Jesus. It's no nobody else. Abraham and Moses are, uh, as leaders, they can pray for their people. So the context is different. When you talk about the sin being removed, the blessings coming through, Satan being defeated, only Jesus is that mediator. But there are others uh, that would be like, you know, people who are in authority structures. Um, in this case, Abraham and Moses are leaders over the people, so they can pray. So it's a different context. Sure. I'll uh, just leave it at that. Uh, so we'll pray and we'll close. Or is there a question? Some question? No. Fine. Um,
Who would like to pray? The mic is in the place. Let's pray. Oh, okay, great. Let's pray. Yeah. Go ahead, Miriam. Loving Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. Thank you for speaking to us, Abba Father. Thank you for the wisdom and knowledge that you have given unto us, King of Glory. Father, we want to thank you for our teachers. We thank you, Lord, for opening our minds. We thank you for the knowledge. Jehovah wants to surrender everything unto you and all the teachings of our Father. We pray that let these teachings, O oh God, find room in us, King of Glory, that we may do this for your kingdom, Abba Father. We worship you. We bless your name. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Miriam. I appreciate that. Okay, thank you, everyone. God bless you. Uh, we'll meet you all in the next class.